So Flexrite carries a, we carry $10 million worth of insurance because we do high, the you know, the big commercial work. Um, and when we're doing these big model homes, I can't afford to pay for the paint jobs in these homes because these are big, big homes. You know, big the big foyers and all, the homes that I, I personally cannot afford to purchase on my own. So I don't want to mess up nick a wall or mess up a, something on a floor. I need, I just, because they don't just, they got to paint the whole wall, you know? Um, so we have to carry a lot of insurance. When we're doing a Willow Grove Mall, Willow Grove, the, the client wanted $5 million worth of insurance. Another client wanted two more. Okay, that's great, but we need seven. Another client wanted another one. And then we went up to 10 and sorry, if anybody needs more than 10, we just can't do the job. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but that being the case, you're only taking on that type of expense because you're billing to cover that expense. You follow me? Um, so I want you guys to know as newbies um, in the drone industry, although some of you aren't newbies in business, these are the things you're going to run into specifically in the drone industry all right um but this new this new project that we uh we just took on that we uh, that i'm taking on I, and here's nothing it's not signed yet all your clients will tell you what they want it's never what they need right <laughs> and then they'll tell you what they need it's never what they want you know and now multiply that by a thousand in the drone industry because they think you can just fly this stuff. They don't know that you have to call PennDOT because it's a Pennsylvania highway to get permission of, to fly on that roadway. Or the township has an ordinance. Um, they don't know any of that stuff. They just, you know, I, and I told you a story about that uh, when we are doing the mall. Um, so all that to be said, we finished the conversation I sent the paperwork out, did the quote real fast, the RFQ. I sent that out to him. I, I gave him a discount. I said, listen, I'm going to give you a discount because you're allowing our students. A client like that that's paying that kind of money, you let him know he's getting a discount because you're putting students who are capable on this project, right? Well, how much would it be if it wasn't students? Six grand. So I'm saving you some money. Can your students do it? Really? <laughs> I wouldn't be telling you we could do it if, you know, if our students weren't going to do it. I didn't say that, but I was thinking that. I said, my, our students are very capable. Um, and it's not going to be until the end of the month anyway. So you guys are going to have a lot of experience and get shake the, uh, shake the uh, rust off anyway on these, these weekend projects. You know what I mean? Um, so as soon as I get the, the thumbs up on it, I'm supposed to have it by the end of this week, which means next week, right? Because um, that's just how it works. Um, we'll, have, we'll make sure you get it at the end of this week. Okay. <laughs> um, and here's another thing, too, guys. You always, and I'm going to cover this in the class. You always want to know who's the person responsible for cutting the check. Because you don't want your, your, your invoice sitting on somebody's desk. If it has to sit on somebody's desk, I just want to know who I need to send it to. Who's the guy that needs to sign off on it? Give me that person's name. Otherwise, you 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 play the oh you play what I call the office shuffle. Has to go to this office, that office, this office, that office, right? Um, real quick, one uh, when we were doing a job for the uh, L and I in the city of Philadelphia, first job we did for them, it was like ninety days. Um, and by the way, guys, on the business and corporate side. You're not, you're not going in doing this and getting paid. They're not, you're not exchanging work for a check. You follow me? Um, they are, you have like a net 30 or whatever the case may, may be. If it's a great client, right? Um, uh, Don Carey uh, helped me out here. If it's a great client, you'll get it in 30. In most cases, you're going to probably get it about, uh, about 40, 45, right? Until you, if you build up a relationship with them, you, if you got a really good relation with them, you'll get it in 20, you know, 20 or a week after you submit it. Um, my, they need to spend the exactly, year exactly, year. right. And then more you guys do this, you'll know when not to take a project because fiscal year in, it's J July, J June, whatever the case may be, you know, and we're going to talk about all that stuff. But um, the city of Philadelphia, 
well, they were 90 days over budget. I mean, 90 days um, late on their on their um, their balance. I worked for GE, but that was paid 90 days. Didn't want to do work for GE. Yeah, don't exactly. Don't work for them. When I worked for Disney, Disney's like that, right? And they they didn't care. Okay, we'll find somebody to work for us. Right. Um, that's why when you're doing business as a drone operator or a small business owner, you might be too small to be doing business with the 800 pound gorillas. They'll put you out of business because you can't abide by their. What are you going to do? Call and be upset? So when you call and be upset, and then you're risking not ever doing work for them again. So, City of Philadelphia, they sent me to the second floor. They sent me to the second floor, sent me to the, th the fourth floor. On my way back down to the um, to the third floor, right? No, the second floor, but a different office. I was going to have an elevator thing. You know, okay, whenever I say this term, there must be a code for them to start playing office shuffle. So I'm not going to go in and say the same thing, right? So I go in. I don't know if that's the case, but that's what I was thinking, right? Um, I went to like four or five offices before um, I had someone tell me, I'll just leave it here. We'll get it to the right person. So I just went to four or five offices in City Hall and you to, for you to tell me we'll get it to the right person? So which offices were you sitting in that you heard me in and now you're at the end of this uh, pipeline? No, that's not how it works, man. That's not how it works. I wasn't laughing. He was laughing. I wasn't laughing. But I'm trying to get paid. We're already 90 days out and I got to deal with this crap? Today, guys, that was 2000. That was February 2016. Today, we still aren't paid. I will never work for the city of Philadelphia again, ever. And, and by the way, who are we going to do? Write a letter? We're going to call the mayor and, 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 and moan and groan about it? Right? You can't. It's just, I mean, you can, but he's going to like, okay, why are you calling me again? I'm the mayor. <laughs> call one of my department heads. Or the, wh hold on, what city office is it? Call them. Why are you calling here? If you ever get to the mayor. You follow me? So, guys, um, be ready to play these types of shuffle games um, when you start doing work corporately, okay? Um, and we'll spend more time on that. As this project gets uh, closer, and, um, and it's, it's a city, it's, a, um, it's um, Springfield Township, Montgomery County. You know we got Springfield Township, Delaware County, and Springfield Township, Mon Montgomery County, which is around the corner. Um, great client. They pay you, like, on time. 20, 20, 25 days, 20, the 20, 25 day window, you got to check them in. They never go past 30, but it's the township that got some money. You know, you follow me? Um, you, you know, there it may be a township out in Chester County that is a small old township and they don't, what township are you in? West Town. What, who? West Town Township. Do you guys have a police department? County Sheriff or two other. Okay. So a small township, it may take you a minute. If you get hired by them, because and they got the fiscal budget and all that kind of stuff, but we'll talk more about that. Um, Springfield is awesome. Springfield pays 20, 25 days right on schedule, right on schedule. So you always start it because they pay that way. We always start the um, before the tenth of the month because we know um, by the twentieth or twenty fifth of the month a check is coming in. You follow me? Um, there are the other things that you're gonna learn how to do too. You know, you got how do you schedule your revenue based on the projects you, you take on? Um, but again, it's a uh, $4,800 is what I, 4,800 is what I quoted them, um, is to inspect uh, their water tower and all that kind of, and some other stuff. Um, they seem to be okay with the rate. Um, and I'll make it a project for you guys. I'll de designate a project manager and um, we'll uh, split the work evenly. All right, everybody will make the same thing. Um, unless you, unless Connor is off um, sleeping under a tree somewhere. Um, but I'll let you guys police that, you know. You know, I'll, I'll give Wink, I'll give uh, uh, Tim and Anthony Wink, like, you know, they know that Wink is a, go wake Connor up for me. Like, really wake him up, <laughs> you know. Um, as soon as it comes in, guys, I'll let you know, all right. Um, but it's a nice project for you, okay. Um, before we get started on CRM, uh, I asked Don to go over some things for this weekend. All right, Don? Uh, so I just figure out right away, I know Don's still, but I just 
wanted to sort of lay out what the field looks like and what we want to do on Sunday. So we're coming on Church Road, and there's two field roads here. This one and this one. We all came in this way. The red is two fields that are where we're going to be playing. So we're over here waiting for people to come in. And if you remember, Skipper said, and then people started coming on the other side. So we're thinking everyone's going to park here because it's a big lot and see us from here. But people started coming in here. So you've got people walking this way, you've got people walking this way. And then once it gets really full, the overflow, people are going to be over here. Okay? So we're probably going to park here again. We kind of set up over here. There was electric here, but we're going to have two ground power stations, right? So we won't want to worry about that. Don, point out where you're, um, oh, I see it. Never mind. Go ahead. So these are the two fields. The distance between these, I would say, is 15 yards. So there are some spectators here, there are some spectators here, some spectators here. Now, this is not 11 man against 11 man football with uniforms and helmets. This is seven and seven. So there's seven guys and seven guys. <coughs> playing in the direction of each other. The goalie starts in three. <coughs> they have. It's touch football. Right. It's Eighth grade. It's not even five, it's touch football. So this is about teamwork and throwing and skills and trying to figure it out. And they have refs, by the way. It's referees. Yep. Um, and <clears throat> I was trying to tell Don the whole time what the stool was. Don was telling me to rest it down. I said, no, Don, they don't sit. I'm picking. <laughs> Don to tell you what I'm talking about. So, so they have what looks like a three-legged stool. And it's got a time to go into it. So as soon as they're done, they put the ball on the stool, which stops the timer. And when they pick it up, it starts the timer again. And then they run the stool down if there's a difference. No, it's all passes. Yeah, okay. Guys, so the stool is the center. Right. So the, the, the he's taking off from the stool. Right. And Although occasionally someone would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if he wanted to practice a shotgun, I guess occasionally. Yeah, the stool is also a, the timer. Yes. It's also a timer. So if there are two 20-minute halves separated by uh, 10 minutes worth of intermission. So these you recognize as, help me out. <clears throat> Not ice cream cones. Yeah. So these, so these are the four baseball diamonds that we sort of talked about. The grass here, it, it's although your fan is tall enough, they kept falling over because the grass is so high. The grass is probably that deep, so they really have trouble taking off and landing in the grass. And the Mavericks, as we talked about, the gimbal just goes in the grass and you care. So we would we would try and take off probably from here or the parking lot over here. And these fields, that's where you're going to have what's my primary, secondary, and tertiary sort of emergency landing spot. You're going to aim for one of those fields to sort of land. What we would do is we would take off and sit here for a while, and we would just sort of do a little bit of yaw as we couldn't get the whole field. Then we came down here and, again, just took off, stood there, and watched the play go this way. Then later on, we took off here, parked the camera in the sky, and just watched the play go that way. It's sort of alternating, taking pictures and, and video. The distance from here to here is 40 yards. Easily. Yeah. yeah. Maybe 50, 40, 50 mm -hmm. yards. So mm -hmm. a little bit of a walk. Um, but that's the basic layout that we're going to be doing over these two fields. So if we're going to have eight of us, we could sort of have, you know, one, two, three birds here, four, five, six birds there, two ready to go up as the other two are coming down and fueling or rebattering or whatever you call it, something like that. So that would be the idea of the coverage that we want to get. Does that make sense? So you have a basic idea of what we're walking into. I think you could dictate it as far as, you know, um, you know, when you're taking pictures or videos, you guys just kind of made the call on your own? We made the call on our own. I mean, <clears throat> I appointed Don as the project manager. So Don's the project manager for this project all the way through. Um, Don and I just made the call. And um, everybody just followed suit. Remember, guys, Tim was out there, too. Um, Tim, anything you want to add to this? Nothing? So we, so we have an orange cone. So if we're standing here, right, the vest right, put the cone in front of you. And the idea is the cone and the vest should be a signal to the people to stay away. But as Skip was talking about, what do you call it? Fixation of the target? Target so fixation. If you're buried on that, you're not going to see someone walking. So the idea is to get fairly comfortable taking your eye off 
the party in order to look around and see what's going on. Where is, where is the deal with the Yep, yep. So remember the video should be at your where. Right. <coughs> five or your seven right. Since we're not going to be walking the dog because we're basically standing still, they wouldn't physically see at our 11 or our 1. They're going to be behind us sort of watching and talking to themselves. So, and then we'll go from the deal to the deal you know, plasma to the deal plasma. That, that way everybody can see. And or, and or we'll determine when we're out there, <coughs> see how we're doing on batteries. Um, well, maybe you guys won't have VOs. You might have to be your own VO in some cases. We didn't have enough people. Although, like, Tim was kind enough when he was charging his battery to come out and go. Let me tell you why Tim was charging his battery. Because he crashed a few times and the battery was unscathed, right? So so he went off. Right, not, to put him on, not to put him on Main Street, right? No, I'm, I'm kidding. He didn't crash. He didn't crash. But Tim, Tim just made sure when he was charging his battery, I, I, I asked him one time, can be ill for me on Don, and and I just went over and focused on the on the ladies who was flying for us. But nobody had a VO that day, unless I was staying next to you, I'd be your VO. Or Tim was the extra guy; he was the VO for Don. Um, but in most cases, and Tim and Don would be able to, because uh, they'll take lead because they already did this out there. Um, I'm I'm gonna just sit back and just give advice and then work with all you guys um, to help you understand how to shoot this thing. And or Don and, matter of fact, Don, Tim, and I will be doing that in rotation probably. You follow me? Um, to help you get your shot and stuff like that, um, if that makes sense. Don, Tim, I didn't ask them. Are you guys good with that? Yeah, you, you'll be able to help us out. Um, you'll take one field. You'll take the other field. I'll be going between them. Then you guys will be up in the air. And no, I'll just be going between them. You follow me? I'm not flying at all um, because I want to make sure I work with you guys to teach you guys how to. Capture this stuff, okay? The reason we talked about the chair, was we didn't, we, we weren't being funny uh, or being so, so, we weren't being all silly, right? Don, hold on a sec, don't say that yet. Um, <clears throat> the reason we're talking about the chair is because if the chair, where are my football fans in the room? What, anybody, you've all seen a football game, right? All right, the chair is the center. You know, the guy that passed the ball to you, right? That chair is the center of the field. At all times, right? So they're not across the football fans. Then they're not on the hash, right? The rest are bringing it straight down the center of the field. <clears throat> because that chair is the center of the field, that's where you want to make sure you got everything from the you if you if you focus on that chair, you should, you should be able to have the whole whole field. You follow me? And when we go out there um, this weekend, I'll um, Don and Tim, I'll be the chair. And Don and Tim, John, Don and Tim will show you guys what we mean. I'll just walk out there and and you know let and let Don or Tim focus on me as the chair to get you guys ready for the chair. Okay, <clears throat> makes sense. What, what ATO we were flying at? Twenty to thirty. Yeah. Yeah, somewhere around there. Um, if you're moving the ball down the field, would you actually be flying over the? Field? No, no, no. You don't move. You're just hovering. Because you don't want to be over people. Right. And it was way too gusty. The winds were way too gusty. Because Don and Tim, I thought about, actually I got the idea from you. I thought about flying the, the aircraft in the center of the field and let your camera go like that. You know what I mean? Because um, Don kept doing it anyway. I was like, well, maybe I should just give him some practice. Give him some practice and, and let's all see what, what kind of shot we get. Because that might be a really cool shot. You know what I mean? Um, Got to go higher. But it still might be a really cool shot. Um, and since Don was doing it, I might as well say, Don, go shoot it. <laughs> you like doing that. You know, he, Don has um, um, he has fat fingers, so he kept hitting that button. But, guys, listen, it's easy to hit that button, is it not? Keep in mind, the Mavic's controller is like that versus like this. You follow me? On the Phantom. <clears throat> but I, I want uh, Don, I wanted us to talk about this project um, and we'll probably talk about it one more time before we get out there. That when we when we get out there, we can maximize our time um, to get up and going. If you have an aircraft and you weren't out there with us um, between now and Friday, 
um, be between now and Saturday, I want you to practice setting up your gear. All right? Because we got to, especially because we moved in, we were out there at 1030, 1030. 12 o'clock was on us like that, right? And there was only a few of us, so we were able to set up fast. Um, but we moved the time up 15 minutes, so now we're talking 1045. So we got to be able to get this equipment set up, okay? And ca Don, Tim, remind, remember this. Let's calibrate from the same place, the uh, um, the um, the baseball baseball field. Uh, no, the yeah, the, that one. Yep. Let's calibrate from there where Don was landing. Let's calibrate there because we had enough. You follow me? We had enough time because exactly. Let's just go that way, okay? Um, any, any questions, guys? And show the goal post too. Sorry. Like the goal post. There is a goal post right about here. So we and, and we fly in, in just in front of the goal post. So that's one thing you need to watch with your GO. If if you decided I need to get out of here and, and go high and backwards, you could be in the goal post. Yeah, so don't clip that goal post. All right. No, no, no. These they these are fields they made. Correct. Okay. They're, they're, right. they're based I'm sorry. They're baseball fields. They're not football fields. They're turning the baseball fields into football fields. Yeah, yeah. It must have been a football field a long time ago. No. No. There's way too much going on out there. The baseball fields, baseball fields weren't touched. Don't even look like they're being used. Yeah. Right, right. But let's watch, watch this, guys. No matter how much we talk about this, all best laid plans change at first contact, right? So as soon as we get out there, everything we're talking about could be out the window, and we got to come up with a, another plan on the fly. All right? Yes, Anthony. <laughs> all right, so if I, had, if I had my drink in my hand, Terrell will go like this. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, because. No, no, I, I, we explained that. You always look at your weather, right? I, listen, I'm not saying that because I don't want you to ask that because there's some things we forget, right? Remember I told you guys I forgot about checking where the airports were and all of a sudden a plane shows up, right? Um, so it was like that question is fine, but you always check the weather. Last Sunday, Tim and Don will tell you we had to check the weather. That's how big, busy the wind was. And your your motors are working harder because of the wind. Keep the air bird, keep the bird up. Follow me. Um, so Tim was running out of battery like crazy, and he only had one. And when we get there, we run the first half. When we run before you fly, what's he going to tell us? Oh, if any, if any advisories or we're going to see. There's not one, not two, but three heliports yeah. within five miles. Of yeah. Because Merck's right there. The hospital, Lansdale Hospital, is is like Penn a trauma center. That's all, and Lansdale Hospital is within under a mile away, but we're not in the flight path. Um, and by the way, remember what you just asked? I didn't check. I didn't check for airports. You follow me? I didn't check for airports. I was just wondering about the wind. Actually, Don and Timothy, I was hoping we'd go and get out of it. I didn't even want to do it, right? Yeah, I was hoping it was going to rain on us. Like, dang! So I was, I was taking the showers, looking out the window, like maybe it's going to rain, you know? Um, yeah, it was just overcast, right? Did you just, no, we just flew. We just that was flew. My question, because I know where I live, garbage and clothier has a heliport at the exit mall, which is not even used anymore. But yeah, so you, there's nobody to call. Right, there's no one to call. Yeah, like, like there's a the industrial park over here. 
Roar used to be in that industrial park right on the first turn. They have the CEO used to fly his helipad in. That helipad shows up on your before your fly app here, but it's nobody to call. Yeah, nobody to call. Um, thank you, Don. <clears throat> and guys, another reason why what I what I'm when I don't I'm hoping I don't see. Um, I really don't want to see this again. <laughs> Listen, there's some guys, they're the cheerleaders. Tim kept focusing on them. I don't know why, right? But his battery kept going down. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When Adam Sandler, when he threw the game. The Longest Yard. Longest Yard. The remake of the first thing, Longest Yard in the 70s. Yeah. Burt Reynolds was in the first one. I mean, he was in the second one. He's a, he's a coach. He's a coach. Yeah. He was in the first one. I forgot about that. Yeah. Remember the guys, the cheerleaders? Yeah. You know, so when I was in Tim's VO, I wasn't at his seven. I was at his nine, and I had about 15 yards between us. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm picking. I'm picking. Um, guys, we're going to be talking about this more. Um, um, but hey, we're going. Nobody knows we're students. All right. Um, so game time comes Sunday. All right. I hope everybody who said they can come out will come out. Um, we'll make sure we have all of the aircraft out. I'll make sure we have some power. Although we have power, we'll probably use, still use house power. Also, that way we have enough of it. If, and, and if anyone's got one to come, I think you've got a four-foot table. I've got a four-foot table. I'm going to bring a um, people, I'm gonna bring our group. ten. That's right, because we got. I have a six-foot. You have okay. a four. So Anybody got a fold-up uh, table? Yeah, that's fine. Um, Guys, can you bring it with you? Listen, we may not just understand we may not bring it out, but it's better to have it and better and have it and need it versus the other way, right? Um, um, but bring it if you can. I'm gonna bring the tent out anyway. Um, somebody look at the weather app for me real fast and tell me what the weather is uh, for Sunday. Yeah, Tim, um, Connor, you got it? Tell me, you got it? Anybody got it? That's fine. That's fine. That's for Lansdale, Pennsylvania? 19446. So you're looking at Lansdale? So like we so same thing as last weekend. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the I got more time. That's good. It's better than last weekend. Yeah. I'm not forgetting about you guys, Wally and uh, Jack. <clears throat> guys, remember what I said last night? 100% um, of what you received last night or is on exam. Remember I said that? Same with tonight. 100%. Yep. Because remember, ADM is the cousin. Uh, CRM is the cousin to ADM. Excuse me. Yeah. 
as it goes. So Jack and Wally. Yeah, yeah, you're supposed to. Jack, pass this to Wally, please. <clears throat> Jack, I gave you the one to replace from last night, right? The board from last night? Yep. All, right, all right. So, Michelle and Wally. So, did I give everybody tonight some? Did I miss anybody? Everybody has one for tonight? All right. <clears throat> Wally, Michelle, I want you to replace last night's board with what I'm giving you now. If you took notes on it, right, just keep it and just put this one here is in place of it, all right? Who's this? It's yours? Yes, sir. Okay. No, you're supposed to. Huh? Yeah, if you didn't take notes on it. <clears throat> so, guys, listen, you have what you have is t um, tonight's board. Then you have the single tonight's board. Everybody look up. Then you have sing uh, single crew resource management. Then you have a sit rep report, right? It has holes in it. Then you have another one that don't have holes in it. The one that I gave you that does not have holes in it is your extra one that you can make copies for your keep making copies, your master, for you for when you make your binder, okay? That's why you, you had two. So CRM, guys, <clears throat> crew resource management, it's the sibling to, um, not cousin, it's the sibling, very close sibling to ADM, okay? ADM is about what? Safety, safety right? Um, crew resource management is also about safety, and it focuses on the crew and their part in keeping everyone safe, all right? Um, you all got me on that? Now, keep in mind, we're talking about Manned aircraft. However, I'm a married into drone, drone, drone into the drone segment or sector, but they want us to learn it from manned aircraft, and that's the way it's on the, on the exam. Okay, just like by the way, remember we're the newest member to general aviation. Um, so they're not they're not taking everything out. We still have to learn with all the, what they know. Um, but I'll bridge this, some of this, or if not all of this, to the drone segment. But the way they want us to learn it, the way they want us to learn it, and the way, the way it's on the exam is if you're a manned pilot, all right, manned aircraft pilot. So with crew resource management or otherwise CRM, you remember we define ADM, aeronautical decision making? We defined it, all right? I'm not going to put you on the spot because then – Unless somebody wants to take it without looking at their notes. Anybody want to take it? Connor? No? Michelle? Terrell? Uh, who defined 
ADM? No, no, no. Do you want to define ADM? Uh, uh-huh. Uh, Hold on. If you can't get it verbatim, just say, nah, not me. All right. A anybody else? Jack is looking at me saying, yeah, I'll take it. Okay. He's looking at a set of circumstances. Nope. Say again. Looking at a given set of circumstances and deciding the best course of action. That's close. Yeah, I, yeah it's uh, close. Yep. But listen, guys, remember what I said last night? We have to learn that definition verbatim. All right. I wrote it, I wrote it on the board the way it was described, the way it's described from the um, FAA. I didn't add an of, I didn't add an and, I didn't add it is, I didn't take an O out. It's verbatim. You have to learn it um, the way it is. Because I'm telling you, it's on the exam. No, I said some of you won't get it, but I'm telling you, it's on the exam. All right. Um, well, just like we define ADM, crew resource management is close, um, and you have to know this one too. It's defined as the management of all onboard and outside resources available to a pilot before and during a flight to help ensure. A safe and successful outcome. Remember, I told you guys about the um, the video um, from I'm sorry, the incident that happened in the 70s with the where they're fixated um, on a beacon light, right? That's why CRM was involved is is instituted in this because um, they realize we need help from the crew every, as well. Everyone has been involved in safety. Um, um, Terrell. Being from the that world, um, how many safety checks does the flight attendants go through? Uh, it's unreal the amount of safety checks. You're talking about on the pre departure. Yeah, yeah. During departure. Is that why it takes us takes us so long to Absolutely. leave? I mean, every every supplemental check to make sure because when we get in the air, we there are no extra halons, any uh, portable breathing apparatus if there if there's a fire. Every emergency medical kit needs to be checked if she needs to make sure everything's in there. So literally, we sweep the entire airplane, or we have certain sections. And then from there, we test the emergency alert system. Everything is over and over. So you check it all. Check everything. <clears throat> Regardless if you just landed, got a new flight, you got to check it all. If we come on this airplane new, we have to check it all. and not just ground it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't know that. So the crew. We report it to the front end. The all's, all's we, good. Yeah, we get them on the phone, tell them, let the captain know exactly what's going on. What, first of all, what, where you are on the airplane. When you call, <laughs> first thing you want to know where you are on the plane. You know, and then tell them, you know, and then from there, they usually get a ground services to come in and evaluate or may, and or maintain. And then we're only allowed to set to read. We have to check the circuit breakers for everything's intact. So if one's popped, that could be a potential electrical fire. And so all of that is reported to the cockpit. Wow. Wow. We're only allowed to reset it one time. So if I see the circuit breaker pop, it popped out one time. Other than the next step is maintenance testing. Guys, the reason this is important is because um, you too have checklist, and now you're coming into a, the world of aviation. Um, this stuff that you should uh, complete. I don't fly the same anymore. Um, when I went to San, remember I went to San Diego for that show, and the plane on behind us was the the plane that the woman got sucked out have, out the window, right? Guys, I'm being to totally transparent with you. When they're doing the safety belt stuff and all that kind of crap, I'm not paying attention. I'm listening, but I'm not listening. You follow me? I'm watching them. I'm like, okay, guys. I'm being brutally honest. Sometimes I don't have my seatbelt on because um, it's uncomfortable for me. Um, but on the way back, oh, and by the way, I'm a window, a window aisle seat. I'm sorry, a window um, wing seat. I just it's more room. I like to sit there, um, so I always make sure I get that seat. Um, they have to ask you, and you have to say verbally, yes, yes, yes. Are you willing to take a responsibility? And they say, if they're not, they have to move you. Um, and then I always look at the guy next to me like, you ain't going to freak out on me, are you? 
you know. Um, and then like, I'm not going to freak out. I do it all the time just to break the ice because you're going to be on a flight next to somebody for four hours, right? Um, and then he looks at the last flight, the guy looked at me and said, are you going to freak out? I said, probably. <laughs> you know, and by the way, I can't swim. So save me first. And we laughed, but it breaks the ice, you know. I'm not the kind of guy that want to be on an elevator. Even though it's a yellow elevator, nobody talks. You know, it's like, so this is me on an elevator. You guys want to keep it down in here? Holy crap, you know. And it makes everybody laugh, right? Then somebody will say something, you know, and but it's some conversation. It's just awkward for me. It's an awkward silence when you ride an elevator and nobody wants to say anything, you know. Um, but be with you traveling, with you coming into the world of generation, everybody okay with there? When you're coming on into the world of general aviation, um, all this stuff matters now. You look at stuff differently. So because of the accident that happened on that Southwest plane behind me, on the way back, guys, I mean, I'm being brutally honest. I was listening to everything. I was watching the seatbelt. I had my seatbelt on, right? They said, first time in my life, and I've been flying for years, First time in my life, I actually put my hand under the seat to feel where that flotation device is. They tell you, flotation device is under the seat. All right, I want to find, you know, I, I don't want to find out when we're down. Where is it? So I finally, you know, I just paid it more closely, closer attention to the instructions. Um, yes, sir. Huh? Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Um, Anthony, Anthony, I want you to keep asking because it breaks the ice, man. It, it, it takes my icebreakers out, you know? And yours are better than mine. I'm mine are corny. <laughs> um, yeah, gotcha. So, guys, listen, you're going to start looking at general aviation totally different now. Now that you understand what the aileron is. The movement of the aircraft, the drone. When you, but I told you what they're on the plane. When the flaps, you see the things going like that. You're going to start. You're going to say, "Oh, there it is." You know what I mean? That's an aileron. I don't know what it does, but I see the ailerons now because because the, the, the on the wings they go like that. Um, um, you know, you going. I asked a pilot in my last trip out west. I said, "Hey, can I ask you a question?" He said, "Sure." And I said, "How fast are we going at takeoff?" I just want, because of the loading and balance uh, class that's coming up soon, right? Um, and that's why they don't want everybody sitting in the front or everybody sitting in the back. They want to evenly distribute the weight, right? How fast is the plane going? He's at about 140. 100, is that about right? 140, 140. I thought it was going like four or 500 uh, miles per hour. You know, keep in mind, um, you're on a plane and you're watching the ground go by, you know? I've never seen what four or five hundred miles an hour is. However, this big plane, I'm thinking you need a lot of speed to get the sucker off the ground. Off the ground. Um, by the way, anybody ever? Are you anybody in the room fans of the Fast and Furious movies? You know? Do you know what the Fast and Furious movies are? Yes, with Vin Diesel. There's um, I don't know if it was the the uh, the last one was uh, no, it was the one before the last one. It's where where they fighting on a plane um, at the at the uh, base. Right? You know what I'm talking about, Wally? Okay, well, six. You know what you, if you watch, because of general aviation, guys, this, the fight scene on this plane has to be half hour the movie. I'm thinking, that's a pretty ass damn long runway. <laughs> that runway is long, you know? Big C-140 plane. What are they on this runway for like 15, 20 minutes? And I'm thinking, how long is that runway? But hey, movies, right? <laughs> And then the plane blows up on a runway. I'm thinking, boy, that's a long runway. Um, only because I'm making the point I'm making is because things jump out at you now. You know, you're going, you'll you'll be in the airport and you'll be noticing how um, how the uh, pilots act, and stuff is just going to jump out on you. Um, I, I do have one one last question for you, Terrell. Why do we have to board? 30 to 40 minutes before takeoff. 
Well, that increased when there became a positive bag match. And we, we, all should, we should all be grateful that there is because potentially someone who's had their bag stowed underneath the plane can be pulled off because they acted up, but their bags are still under. So that oh, so if they're pulled off, they're pulling the bags off, pulling too. Pulling the bags off, too. You know, your bags aren't gone, you know. But you want that person in their bag to go to the same place. I thought it was because of safety issues. That's, you know, and it, and it takes that long it to get people a, on and people getting their stuff. Flights, I mean, what, straight bags, associates, facilities. People start shuffling for seats and people want to sit next. So it, it can become a long, very tedious process of 45 up to an hour, I think. International flights. All right. Okay. Are the seating? Is seat? Well, some, yeah. If, if yeah. the person gets pulled off the plane or they miss that connection, you want to get their bags on. It's, <laughs> it, sort, sort the get those bags. Uh, yeah. So. Is seating on an international flight um, nicer than like flying from here to well, I like California? But um, you want to be at least business class. First class, you know, London is thirty thousand dollars on our like A three thirty one way, and I, you know, so people walk up and they just use their card. Corporate executives and wife and everybody, you know, they all come on. So well, are the seats more comfortable yeah. on an international flight? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I've my international flying has always been on military aircraft, and it's not sure. comfortable at all. Sure. But you can tell the people who aren't used to it and the people who are like Naomi Campbell, rich, rich people come in and all they want is bottled water. So somebody who got the hookup from Pookie and them wants everything in the airport. <laughs> <laughs> you know how you're you know, you like two room. inches, nothing. In the first class, it goes back like eight. On the international, <laughs> it goes completely <laughs> flat. Oh, wow. You can lay down and go to sleep. They go wow. Completely. Will somebody send me high Because there aren't that many seats. Oh, wow. Okay. I guess when you're paying 30 grand, right, you want to be able to do that. That's that's interesting. And I just saw um, one of the Asian airlines, they have showers on the plane. Yeah, they have showers on the plane. Um, Asian, Emirates. Emirates, that's right. Emirates is like, um, and they have showers on the plane. Yeah. Emirates is one of the best in Singapore Airlines. I see. Okay. Um, last it's thing. So good they have three uniform changes before we land. Like they boarded in one uniform, served in a whole other uniform, and landed in a whole other uniform. Ah. <laughs> Singapore Airlines. Wow. Unreal. Wow. Yeah, they are like grabbing your bag, throwing it, and putting it on you. And they're like this tall, you know. Right, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> you know, little tramps are tramps. You know, when you're in America, they're standing there like, eh. Yeah, gone. Hurry up. <laughs> Singapore Airlines. Wow, wow. Um, you know, I, I was in the bathroom uh, on my way out west to the west coast, and the the popping just tears me apart. That's the part of the flying I don't like. Um, and uh, all the one I had to ask a pilot on the way back, how do I stop that? And they told me to take some Sudafed and like you know just blow blowing your nose stuff like that. Um, it just tore me up on the way out there. But I, I had to use the bathroom. I use the bathroom, and I'm, I'm in a bathroom. Bath, you know, the bathroom's like that. I'm thinking to myself, how in the 70s and 80s did people have sex on the planes <laughs> in the bathroom? They, they, they still do it. Well, you can. Oh, it's <laughs> 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 I'm hurt. I'm hurt. <laughs> You heard, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, listen. This weekend, this weekend, when we see Michelle off in a, on a field doing her stretching, right, and her legs all up on her nose, we're like, oh yeah, we got you. <laughs> That's <was> funny, Michelle. <laughs> um, yeah, right. Guys, remember, um, um, thanks for the laughter and breaking the ice, guys. Remember at ADM, back to serious business, ADM with a 3P approach, right? Um, CRM has the five, I'm sorry, 
C ADM had the three P model. Anybody remember what they are? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Perceive, pave, right? Perceive goes with pave. So you guys are done. Um, next one. Um, Connor, what acronym goes with process? No, no. Nope, don't tell them, guys. Don, help them out. C-A-R-E, right? Um, so you got perceive, pave, right? Um, process, care. And anybody want to take the last one? Okay, perform, and somebody else want to take the acronym? Who? Me. You what? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so the three P process, perceive, um, process, and perform, right? The CRM, the five P approach, and the three P approach, the five P approach, right, um, um, has its five P's, just like ADM has its three P's. Don't mix them up. Remember I told you? I'm telling you that on purpose because they'll throw um, they'll throw questions at you and mix them up in the um, um, in your multiple choices. Okay, so remember the three P approach. I'm sorry, the five P approach and the three P model. All right. Remember, there was another five on ADM. What's the other five? The five. Look at your cheat sheet in front of you from last night. Look at your board from last night. Nope, keep the, the, that from last night. Errors. The com five common errors. All right, the five common errors. Tim, just come in with me on an early, and I'll go over it with you. The five common errors, right? So you got the three P approach, right? I'm sorry, the three P model, the five common errors, and then a five P P five P approach. Okay, the five P approach, guys, and they also come in the considerations. Is plan, plane, pilot, passengers, and programming. So the first one, the plan. All events that influences the flight to accomplish the mission. Right? Keep in mind, we talk about crew resource management. Remember what, what, what Terrell was just talking about, right? So this is while the pilots in the mall are doing everything they got to do, everybody else is doing the whole the plan is to get from Philly to California. So everybody has to come in and pitch in on safety, right? So all the plan, all events that influences the flight to accomplish the mission. Everybody's involved in that and they have their role. Make sense? The plane. The plane is the airframe, the systems and the equipment. What Terrell was just talking about, right? The airframe, the, the airframe, airframe, the systems and the equipment. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so all those checks have to be done. And then, to, like Terrell was saying, they report back to the pilot. I mean, to the pilot and to the cockpit. And everybody gives a thumbs up in the plane, and we get to go on our trip to California. Make sense? The pilot. Extremely important acronym for you to remember. M safe. M safe. I M S A F E. M safe. The M safe checklist. The M safe checklist, guys. M safe is an acronym. Illness, medication, stress, alcohol, fatigue, and emotion. M safe. Right? This is all about the pilot. Is he sick? How's he feeling? Is he on medication? Has he taken his medication? Mental, mental illness. Um, by the way, that's how that plane went down. Um, M570, I think it was. They still haven't found it. The plane went down from the, the um, um, Thailand, Phil Philippines? 
Was it Philippines? I thought it was Thailand. It was M570 or something like that. They still haven't found that plane. Speaking of mental illness, I have flown with two captain, first officers who had enough time to become captains, captains but because they were cross-dressers, gender bending or whatever, they can't be getting arrested. Yeah. Um, but, but watch this, guys. So imagine that plane... Imagine a plane that they still haven't found yet. Hit the ocean somewhere. They still haven't found that plane, right? Um, yeah, right. Um, so the pilot left a note that he was out. He was, hey, look, I'm out of here. What I don't get is like, dude, why you got to take all of us with you? We ain't out, <laughs> you know? But medication, right? Mineral. I, I don't know any other way to say it. The guy wants to take his life. Clearly, he's having some mental issues. Um, and in fact, they want to take his life and take everybody else with him. So medication is the M. Now I'm going to safe. Stress. Keep in mind, we talk about the pilot. Um, how's he doing with stress? Or how's she doing with stress? Alcohol? Has, has she, he or she been drinking? Right? Fatigue. Did they get enough rest? Right? Um, we now know, all those of us who drive, that it's just as bad driving tired as it is driving under the influence, right? Um, and then emotion. Are they in a good emotional state? Now I'm a, we're going to go back through the 5P approach from a drone perspective, all right? So, but that's the M-safe checklist. You have to know these. Remember I told you guys 100% of this is on the exam. You have to know what these are, M-safe. No, M-SAFE is an acronym for Illness, Medication, Stress, Alcohol, Fatigue, Emotion. Guys got me on that? Wally got me on that? Um, now on the fourth P, the passengers. Who is responsible for what? Think about this. We're, we've been talking about, like I told you where I like to sit on a plane, right? Terrell, as a uh, steward, um, is that the correct name? Steward? Flight attendant. Flight attendant will come and ask me, "Are you okay? because I chose to sit there? If anything happens, are you okay with the responsibility opening the door, helping everybody off?" And and you have to verbally say yes. And they go down the line. They go like this: yes, 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 yes. Right? Um, that's because the passengers don't the passengers have a um, have a responsibility in keeping everybody safe. Something ha if something happens, right? I gotta get carry off, right? Um, I didn't. It's not my fault. She jumped through the window. Think, think about, think about the lady who got sucked through. Some passengers, their our brains as human beings, we can't register what just happened that fast. But some guys grabbed the lady's feet, and they pulled her back in. They couldn't res res um, res resuscitate her, and she was she was uh, uh, deceased. Pass deceased, um, primarily because of all the stuff that hit her in her face. Guys, you guys, is there anybody who has not flown? Remember how big the window is? What do you say? Maybe like that? A whole human body went halfway through that. Yeah, you think, right? I wouldn't make it, you know? I, to the shoulders. Yeah, but then I'm like, Terrell, will you pull me in? <laughs> the, the, the wind. <laughs> I look like a physics project. <laughs> well, the pressure, but the pressure, the pressure probably sucked her through. Well, her body was probably stopping some of that, too. Yeah. No, no, the, um, it cracked the window and, and it didn't go out yet. She went right through that little hole. Right. Right. When the, on my way back, um, I didn't sit in, on the window. I sat in the aisle. Because it is? Um, I sat in the aisle only because that shook me up because it was the plane right behind us. What if I had missed my flight? You know, I don't ride roller coasters, guys. Listen, I have 47 jumps in my military career. For some reason, I can do that, but I can't ride a roller coaster. 
you know, when the roller coasters, the few times I did ride, as it's coming up, this is what I'm thinking. I think I probably rode a roller coaster three times in my life. This is what I'm thinking, the same thing on every one of them. The heck did I get on this thing for? But now you ain't going nowhere. It's, like, it's not like they're going to stop you and get off. And I'm looking at the worst thing I do is look at how, how far we are above the trees. Now all that is coming down. I'm like, crap, this is going to suck. I can't wait for it to be over, you know? Um, but guys, listen, pastors, who is responsible for what? That's going to play into your into the drones as well, all right? The last P, the last P in the 5P approach is programming, panel-mounted and handheld equipment, right? Panel-mounted and handheld equipment. Remember Terrell was talking about they got check circuit breakers and everything, right? The pilot and the cockpit, they're checking all their, their equipment. This is the 5P approach. This is all about now in the ADM, we're keeping everybody safe, keeping the people safe, right? Now, CRM, we're keeping everything safe. Everything safe on top of everything we did in the ADM. Because while the interior team is doing what they're doing, the ground team is outside walking around and sucker looking at it, right? Uh, do the pilots still look at his um, equipment outside? Do they still walk around in planes? Oh, they still do that? They were rotating. I would always go and walk around, particularly with the pilot, and you check for pedo tube static wigs, you look for wheel wells, checking to make sure it's wheel Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so, guys, listen, you understand the 5P approach now? Yes? Don? Carrie? Michelle? Terrell? Anthony? Tim? Connor? Wally? Jack? 5P approach. You're not to mix it up. You understand M safe, yes? Everybody go like this. If you, if you, is there anybody who do not understand M safe? All right. So that's the five P approach, right? Um, <clears throat> don't get a question where they're asking you about M safe, but the question is all about um, the three P approach. Remember, the M safe goes into the five P approach. I'm sorry. Um, M safe goes into five P approach, not the three P model. You follow me? So if somebody's talking about M safe. And the questions around the 3P model, you already know something's wrong. You follow me? So don't focus in on on any of the on any of the acronym of MSAFE if that's one of your because MSAFE does not go with the th um, 3P approach. 3P model. It goes with the 5P approach. All right. <clears throat> now let's talk about the 5P approach from a drone perspective, right? The plan, all events that influences the flight to accomplish the mission. Everything John um, did in the beginning of the class is all about the plan, using the 3P approach, right? Everybody got me on that? <clears throat> the plane, we talked about what type of, how many aircraft we're gonna have, what type of aircraft we're gonna use, how they behave and all that kind of stuff, right? <clears throat> the airframe, the systems and equipment, right? If this if the if it's a system, it is what? S U A S, yes? And you're a part, you make up that system, yes? Um airframe is the actual UAV or UAS, right? And then equipment is everything we're talking about taking out there and all this stuff. You follow me? The pilot, the pilot, the pick. Right? Um, keeping in mind, M safe, the checklist, right? So, <clears throat> illness. Are you feeling okay? Are you not? I don't know if anybody knows last night, I was in excruciating pain. Anybody notice? No? Right? So, I left here and went to the hospital. I was released this morning at five o'clock. Remember, I had walking pneumonia? I now have an upper respiratory issue, infection. Yeah. Um, um, I had two IVs in me and all that crap. And I'm, a, I'm afraid of needles. Isn't that crazy? I could be Marine for 26 years and be afraid of needles. Um, um, so I was a mess last night. So it is your job, it was my job as a pick to let my VO done. I'm just not feeling well. Can you fly today? You follow me? Because if something goes wrong, when the police get there, and if the um, 
NTSB has to be called. They they're gonna ask me, well, how are you feeling? They're gonna take they're gonna take alcohol, drug. They're gonna take urine, all that stuff. You follow me? <clears throat> it, it it's the same for us when we're going through the M safe list, right? Uh, med- medication. Did we take our medication, or if we're on medication, we have allergies, right? We have a, a tough allergy season during that little that nice little um, heat spurt that we had, right? Allergies is messing with everybody. Remember, um, about a month ago, you come outside, your car was covered with pollen, right? Um, Carrie, did you take your Zyrtec? Because you're sneezing a lot, right? Why Why is that important? Because I don't want her to sneeze and her hand go like that. Or her thumb goes like that. Hot you! You follow me? Um, something like that happens. Because it can. Wacky, wacky, uh, one of those wacky um, um, accidents that can happen. Everybody with me? Stress. Um, were you? Are you in a stressful mood? If you're not, it's okay to it's okay to take a break and hand the hand the controls to somebody else. It's okay to take a break and say, "Hey, can I take sit this one out?" It's okay to say, "Guys, can I just leave? I got a lot going on in my life, right?" Um, alcohol. Under no circumstances are you to be drinking the night before or the day of. You follow me? Under no circumstances. I don't even have to talk about alcohol, but I really do. Because I'm coming to talk to everyone, and you don't even realize I'm trying to pay attention to what's going on because it's it's um, the brand that's, uh, that's out there flying. We're just the operators. You understand what I'm saying? So please don't go out. If you're going to be out on Sunday, um, if you have to drink on Saturday, uh, make sure you get it in early. And get it all out your system before you come out on Sunday, okay? Um, I do not tolerate alcohol whatsoever on any of our operations. I fired a person before from a job site because he, and he told me, look, man, I was drinking yesterday. Okay, but I smell on you today, so you can't fly now. You know what I mean? <clears throat> um, fatigue. Guys, get a good night's rest, okay? Get a good night's rest. Carrie, Jack, Don. Um, you have at least a 45-minute drive. Um, Wally, Michelle, you probably got a 50-minute drive. It's about 15 minutes from here. So how long does it take you to get here? An hour? So you got an hour and 20 minutes. Actually, no, you don't because it's Sunday morning. No traffic, you know? What would what, it take you? Hour and two minutes. But now you know where you're going. Right, um, so you're coming up the blue route. Get with Tim. Um, he'll you just you're coming up the blue route versus 95, wherever, however you come. Okay. The whole turnpike. But but listen, listen. Um, so that I just that just happened. Remember that Friday storm we had? The trees fell and everything. Um, I couldn't see at Mid County, and I was in the <clears throat> I was in the um, Easy Pass lane, and I had my Easy Pass in the car, and I realized that as I'm going through, and I go, oh, it's like slow motion. I can see the flash. I'm like. No. So they probably look at me like this on the, the picture. No. Right. Um, so I was get. there's only one exit up. I got off right here. She said, I'm sorry, I got to charge you the whole thing. Well, what's the whole thing? She charged me the entire thing, entire turnpike. She said, but if you send the receipt in this form and they'll give it back to you, guys, it happened in a week. I sent it out the next day. They refunded all my money. No, 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 no. Listen, I'll um, get with me after um, after class. I'll show you how you get your money back. Do you still have the receipt? You still have the receipt? No. I think I still have the toll. I got it. I got it. I'm coming. 
The only way it's going to work is if you have the receipt that they gave you that you paid. <clears throat> now you need the um. That's all right. I'll talk to you offline. Um, because because they will refund you money. They refunded me my money. Um, and they did it within a week. <coughs> oh yeah, trust me. Listen, before I got my money back, I was saying that ain't never gonna happen again. You know, that is never gonna happen again. Um, so you guys got me on M Safe, right? The pick also goes through M Safe. Passengers, we don't have passengers on drones, do we? So what do you think the passengers are on drones? Spectators, huh? Nope. Spectators, your VO and the pick, right? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not the pick. Um, your VO and spectators are passengers. Okay, um, people that can be affected by the drone. The pick is not a passenger because he's the pilot. He or she is a pilot. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we know at least we have one passenger, the VO, right? Programming. Why? Th what do you think programming means um, as far as panel mount or handheld equipment? What do you think programming is on your drone? Nope. Yeah, nope. Your apps, your controller, right? Handheld equipment. Your apps, your controller, and firmware. Firmware updates. By the way, if you're flying on Sunday, check for firmware updates on Saturday night. Okay, right, Tim? I mean, uh, Don? Because you burn a half a battery in 30 minutes. Yeah. So check for firmware on Saturday night. Listen, guys, you want to come out. If you're smart and you're up for it, okay? The first thing you want to do is Saturday, you want to take a ride up there. If you have time, you want to take a ride up there. So on Sunday, you know exactly where you're going, you know where you're going. And also, you know where um, you can come up there and test your equipment, which makes it faster on Sunday. OK. <clears throat> Um, you should be doing that anyway because as a drone operator, you have to do that on all your jobs. All right? Now, this one, I'm going to give you a pass because I'm going to be out there with you, and you're going to have your two um, cohort, your two colleagues out there. Project manager is going to be out there. Don, Tim's going to be out there. I'm going to be out there. We're going to have enough time. But, guys, it wouldn't be a bad idea getting into the routine of doing things the right way. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes. Um, Don, do you mind sending it? Thank you. Send it out there. Don will send it out um, to everybody. Um, I sent a group, no, wait a minute. I sent a group text out, so you might already have it. But Don will make sure, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, but that just has the name of the The following one, I sent the address. The following, um, that's right, Don, make sure they have it. So Don will make sure you have it, all right? Um, so you see how the 5P approach can be applied to us as operators, drone operators? All right. So listen, guys, number four and number five, right? Number four, well, all the 5P approach allows you to make, um, uh, make key decision points during flight. Um, you follow me? The 5P, 5P approach allows you to make key decisions during flight. It's an extension of ADM. ADM is what? <laughs> Aeronautical decision making. CRM is an extension of ADM. All right? Aeronautical decision making. Um, the 5P approach also helps you with your checklist. Right? Last night, I handed this out. Turn this. Turn to this from last night. Don, share with um, Carrie, please. <clears throat> just like you have to remember, just like you have to remember M safe, Jack. Wally. Just like you have to remember M safe, uh, you need to uh, you need to remember this term: personal minimums checklist. See at the top. Shall you see it? Personal minimum check. Personal minimums checklist. See it, Terrell? 
Anthony, you got it? Uh, yeah, no worries. Jack, uh, Tim, are you good? Wally, you good? Jack, you good? Okay, you guys. Hold on. Um, let me have that one back. I have one that has a hole in it. <clears throat> Don probably took it. <clears throat> Guys, just like you have to remember um, MSAFE, you absolutely have to remember this term, personal minimums checklist. When you hear about the personal minimums checklist, you just know it's all about safety, right? It's all about safety. Um, before the task, these are the things you have to understand before the task and after the task. That's the checklist. Do I have the knowledge to perform the task? Um, do I have the technical data to perform the task? So on and so forth, right? Um, I'm not 100% sure, and I'm just being transparent with you, because I always am, that you have to know all this entire checklist. But once you done, I would I both, because I don't know, I didn't get any questions about the, um, the um, specifics of the checklist. Right, but you absolutely, I did get person, personal minimums checklist. I did get that. And everybody tells me they got it too. And when you get this, what do we talk about? Safety, okay? Um, either in CRM or, or um, ADM, okay? So um, remember this, just like I want you to remember um, MSAFE, okay? Because this here, <clears throat> If you look, it says before the task and after the task. Look what you're doing. You're doing you're doing this here pre-flight, pre-takeoff, while you're flying, while you're when you're about to come down, right? And when you're on the final approach to the fi the fixation point. Are you following me? Same thing with us on drone operators. We have a lot to think about. Don, Tim, we had a lot to think about last weekend, didn't we? And even when we're landing. Because now you're going from a mode, your your brain is shifting from capturing that data to, all right, let me get out of here safely, then turn around and walk another 40 yards to get your aircraft. You follow me? Make sure, and watch this. While you're flying across that field, right, 40 yards, make sure nobody's coming across and all that kind of good stuff. So your head's on a swivel. Make sense? <clears throat> so I want you to remember, just like I'm safe, um, I want you to remember personal minimums checklist, all right? Guys, no matter no matter um, no matter how you look at this stuff, ADM CRM, it's all about safety and it's taking extremely, extremely serious uh, seriously, serious, uh, even for us as drone operators. All right. Um, by show of hands, how many people follow uh, FlexRite's Facebook page? All right, so listen, guys. You should you should uh, follow our Facebook page. I'm always putting posts up about safety and stuff that happens. Um, I got a really cool, a really cool. By the way, like the page for me, please. I got a really cool. Um, um, I posted an article today. Uh, Don, you're gonna like this. Um, who is it? Crap, just that fast. Somebody just came out with a uh, uh, a camera that goes this way now, ninety degrees this way. Um, instead of it, all drone cameras go like this. Someone just released a drone where the camera goes like that. So you're while you're flying, while you're flying, the camera is like this. So my my arm is the drone. And the camera is uh, 90 degrees um, up, pointing upward. Um, I think it's Typhoon. And it looks like a Mavic. So it's unique. Yeah, yeah. Um, anybody on our, on our Facebook page? Do you see the post I talk about, the 90-degree um, camera? Who is it? Yeah. Who, who is it, um, Connor? Parrot. Parrot. Oh, oh. Parrot, yeah. And it looks like a Mavic. You know, it's, it's like everybody's going following that design of a Mavic. Um, and I'm not a big fan of Parrot because um, I told you about how, no, that was Typhoon. I'm, Parrot to me is just 
I mean, spending a thousand dollars, I want some. I don't want to feel like plastic. You know, I want it to feel like something. Parrot to me feels like plastic. Listen, guys, I'm sure it's a, a, a great aircraft. I'm just not. It's not my cup of tea because I trained and was. I I was introduced to drone industry on the DJI. By the way, I posted another article on our Facebook page too. DJ um, um, DJI just teamed up with um, Axon. Exxon is formerly is the for, um, former name of Taser. Police Tasers, Taser out of San Diego. They changed their name to Exxon. They teamed up with just recently. They teamed up with DJI, the largest drone company in the world, right? Um, they teamed up with uh, DJI to form a new company, Exxon Air, S with the sole purpose of selling equipment. UAS equipment to law enforcement. Um, and they're going to be pushing the Phantom 4 Pro and the M200, 210, the Matrice 210. Um, a nice, pla nice platforms. But what, what's interesting about this, guys, is that um, Exxon has like a monopoly on law enforcement, fire safety, and everything in the country. If, if police departments are buying their stuff, they're buying it from them, you know? Um, so me as a business owner, I thought, crap, I just lost that sale because that's who I service, right? That's why. And I was like, well, wait a minute. They're selling equipment, but they're not doing the training. You know what I mean? So, okay, I'm already a, a partner with Exxon because um, we trained them on the consulting side of our house. So we'll just let them, agencies, buy their equipment from makes it easier for us. You know why? Because I don't have to buy my way into the state contract. I could just say, buy through them, get your equipment, let me know, we'll come over and set it up. And, and you're done. You follow me? You, same way you got, it's a chess game, business chess, a game, a context sport, right? You're going to be thinking the same way. Your first thought in some cases is like, man, I'm losing. Oh, my gosh, I'm losing. But then when you look at it, remember the shoe salesman, right? You sent me down here and the natives don't even wear shoes. You know, and the other guy calls back, it's all about perspective. Man, we're going to make a killing then. And guess what? The natives don't wear shoes. See the difference? Remember that story I told you? Right? That's the same thing I had when I, when I read the article. Right? I was like, are you kidding me? But now, I said, I mean, quickly after that, I was like, oh, great. I don't, have to, I don't have to spend money to get on state contracts anymore. I'll just tell them, buy it from, from them, and and I'll just come and set it up. So it also, you might be losing, instead of losing this much, now you're losing that much. Make sense? You guys will be dealing with the same stuff when you get into this stuff and start really deep diving into this. Okay? Um, everybody got me on CRM and ADM? Any questions? Oh, now... <clears throat> um, so um, I know the uh, CEO of Taser now, Axon, um, and that was the first thing that popped in my head um, for them to carry our power stations. We have uh, meetings tomorrow with, uh, is it tomorrow? Tomorrow with um, a, a, ch a chief of police and uh, school system on another project we're working on that Don, um, Don uh, fi uh, ruffled up. Um, and then we're with Lawman Supply on, um, on uh, Friday. So we have a busy Thursday and Friday coming up. Um, <clears throat> but now, and, and both of those companies, uh, Lawman, just like um, uh, Taser Exxon, or Exxon, is on all state contracts. So is Lawman. So, um, but that, I did think about that, Carrie. Um, I should call this guy. And that's how you guys have to be thinking also. Listen, guys, let me say this to you. Um, I have yet to run into the field of dreams. I only know one thing on the planet that's the field of dreams, right? If anybody knows the story about the field of dreams, you build the, build the stadium, they will come, right? Um, there's only one thing I know of on the planet that's the field of dreams. That's drugs. Right? That's drugs. Build it and they will come. 
I can go I, if I turn that corner out there into a drug corner, somebody's gonna show up to buy it. A car is going to stop and like, hey man, hurry up, hurry up, and, and hit the turnpike. You follow me? Um, drone technology, and follow me on this. Although you have it, it is not the field of dreams. You have to find the work. The work is out there for you as long as you can convince them that, listen, you're not becoming a drone operator to look for a job. You're becoming a drone operator because you are the job. You just got to convince the people on the other side of that window that you exist. Are you following me? Same thing with our equipment. It's, it's great. I'm excited that we have this equipment. But that's, that's because it's on this side of the window. Now, the, I, all the work to get to that, now I got to do all, that was just to get to zero. Because now I got to convince people on the other side of the window to buy it. Make sense? Same thing you have to do. You have to convince the world that you exist and you're the best solution for them. You sell yourself as their solution. You follow me? Don't sell yourself as, hey, I'm just another operator. I can do this for you. No, you're selling yourself as the solution. You're showing up as, you're, you're showing up and then you, in your mind, right, when you walk in, this is what you're, this is what they see. I'm here, right? In your mind, that's what you want to convince them as. Matter of fact, wait a minute. Um, who, flow. What, uh, what commercial? What progressive? Progressive has a new commercial. Flo's uh the guy that one that's with Flow now. He's outside. He thinks of himself as a superhero, right? You'll see it now when I point it out. He's like this, and and his head is a big car. He's a he's a cartoon figure, and he's get to a house and he he saves the house from flooding, but the other house next to him is on fire, and then he comes back to reality because the customer a branch tree branch fell on the lady's car. And she says, we're covered, right? He says, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, he's like, this, oh, yeah, yeah, we're covered, right? Giddy up. And then, because he, he's still in his head about riding a horse, right? Guys, same thing, that's you. You are that commercial. When you show up, what I see as a customer is the big red cape flapping, flapping in the wind, the big red boots. I feel good because my Superman just arrived. Now, you have to convince me that you're you you are what I am seeing. Are you following me? And that's hard. That's the hard part. This the passing the exam is the easy part. Now once you pass the exam, you're walking around with a license. Now what are you gonna do? You gotta go find work. That's the hard part. And everybody in in the industry is is learning the same same way. That that's the hard part. Y'all got me on that. So the last thing I gave you tonight, I'm gonna give you two. Is a sit rep report. One has holes, one don't. The one that does not is uh, your master copy for you to make um, um, uh, copies. Because every flight you want to have a sit rep report and and or a small civil engineering, the little uh, engineer's book that you write your stuff down, right? Do you have any of those or can you get any? Are they in the office, or do you have to buy them? No, don't worry about that. Uh, do you have one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you have one you can bring to class? Bring the class for me um, next. Bring it with you on Sunday. Okay, thank you, guys. Your sit rep report. Sit rep is the situation. Sit is all situ about situational awareness, right? Um, if you follow, and the reason I put it in with ADM and CRM is good because it's just another layer of safety, right? There are 17 steps. 17 steps, and it's covering everything we can think of. Um, time and date, right? Time and date, UAV operator, um, aircraft. So you're flying like a Phantom, Phantom 4 Pro, put the serial number down, see identification number? Put serial number down. Um, mission locator. If you look down to eight, weather conditions at mission location, right? Because weather where carry where you live is going to be different than Lansdale. Um, 
Look at step number 17. Personnel. Right? There's personal minimums checklist. See that? Second line down in 17. See person, personal minimums checklist? Um, ADM maintenance. Look at 16, your pilot in command or your visual observer. Um, look at 14, important, intelligence reconnaissance. Don, Tim, tell the class again what we did before we started. Thank you, Tim. Um, Don, you want to add anything? Well, I would say we've got some nice substitutes to the course to this. How's the calibration as we evolve and get it advanced to make sure that we can get the picture of the spoiler uh, video and whatnot so that we can explain the reason for the fly so we knew that there was a great help for us in weather and other equipment. <laughs> so, guys, that's all everything Tim, Don was saying, are saying, and my little bit. Um, that I went out on Saturday. See what we were walking into. Um, I never, I've never been to that field. So I want to know what the heck we're walking into. That's all your recal reconnaissance so you can um, do intel. Now, if we had filled this out, we could have just gave you guys each one of these to help you better understand the, um, the, what you're walking into on Saturday, I mean, on Sunday, right? Um, but we didn't, we didn't do this yet. Um, so, guys, this is why we created this report. I hope you. I hope it helps you. Um, you can change it if you want. You can do whatever you want. Um, you can use it and create your own. Uh, but it needs to. This report does not exist in ADM or CRM. We just did it because of a real world. Uh, us, what we've learned from a real world experience, it helps. All right. I didn't go to the day before. I went 15 minutes ahead of time to scope it out so I get there. And there is a football field over here with two goalposts. Not the goalposts, of course. So, so I'm, I'm walking around, scoping out. I'm figuring out where I'm going to be. You know, and, I, and I'm ready to go. Skip that. No, no, that's not it. It's over here. So, I'm, but, I'm but hold on, guys. But, but watch this. What Don is saying, each one of you might do it also. And you're going to be thinking, like, what? Because the field Don is talking about, it's all high grass. Yeah, it's high grass. Because when I got, remember I told you guys I haven't been out there? When I went out there on Saturday for the first time, it took me 20 minutes to realize this isn't it. I was about to, because all the gates are locked and I'm like, is this, wait a second. Then I went like this here. There's War Memorial Field. There's a veterans field with stadium and everything. I was like, and it looks like a football field. I'm like, maybe they're going to be over there. Then I got in the car and drove around and realized and pulled up on the other field and saw the coach. And I'm like, now I'm in the right place. But what Don is saying, he went to that field, I went to that field. You might go on that field. If you're paying attention, Don said at the beginning of all this, the church roadside. Okay? The church roadside, that field is on Penn, Penn Street side. Right? Because the address is 400 Penn Street. When you put the address in, it's going to bring you on to Penn Street. But you want to come in on a church roadside. Okay? Make sense? Don, did I say that right? Um,
Say again. Don't even worry about it. Trust me, you're gonna find it. Yeah, you're gonna find it. Um, right. Right. So, guys, just know when you're at the field with nobody out there and it's high grass, it's around the other side. But you can't go through. You gotta get in the car and drive around. Okay. Um, the SID rev report, you see how it can be of value to you? Um, yes, Don. Is this the log sheet you're talking about, or is that a completely That's the log sheet. So this is the log sheet. It, well, it could be your log sheet. Okay. But um, um, I purchased a log, a UA, UAV log book. I've never used it. I just purchased it. Um, um, but this could be your log sheet. Absolutely. Uh, did you have something, Wally? Okay. Guys. That's ADM and CRM. It's ADM and CRM is simple because it's all about safety. And you just gotta remember the three P model, right? Um, the five the five common errors, um, the five P approach, M safe, personal minimums checklist. They're the ones you have to remember here. Everything else is you know, easy easy and you'll remember it. Okay? Yes, sir. I mean, it's easy and it's common sense. Yeah, I think uh, it's easy because it's a memorization. So the way I do it is I start with ADM A, and that's that three P model. So A after A, three comes after A, and then C has got the five. So alphabetically, A has got three, and then C's got five. So I just kind of like a little sure. acronym in my head. Sure. A stands for three, and B and C stands for five. Right. But watch this, Jack. But don't forget, you got five common errors. Right, under the A. Right, very good. Um, guys, any questions on ADM CRM, aeronautical decision making, or crew resource management? Carrie, you're in business. Don't mix CRM up with the other CRM. Carrie's a. I did too. I did too, because I'm, I'm from your world. Um, and I had to remind myself as well. There you go, exactly. So, yeah, that's right. Um, guys, that's ADM and CRM, and it's all about safety. Good good idea, Jack, um, uh, Don. If you have a phantom, raise your hand. Hold on, uh, P4s? P4s, right? Okay, P4. You got two P4s done, and then you have two P3s. Oh, P3s, okay. How many batteries on the P4s? One, two, three. How many on the other P4s? Four, five, okay. How about on the P3s, how many batteries? Um, you're going to have one, two, probably. None. There are no Mavic Pros in here. Other, I mean, other than yours. Well, I have your batteries or just mine? Yes. So six batteries. How many batteries? 20 batteries. Anything else, Tony? Okay, I'm going to take a picture of it so I know what we have to try and figure out. Don, do me a favor and send that to me, please, before Saturday or by Saturday. Is that what that is? Okay. One and eight. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I have a spark. It's not. You're eight. That's spark. I mean, back. Write the spark down. All right. Who's coming in don't have equipment? Terrell, Jack, Connor. Well, you're not coming, right? Okay. She won't let you come? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, stay with me, man. <laughs> um, so, who again? Connor and and, uh, and Terrell, all right, um, and Jack. So, um, 
Here's what we'll do. Jack can fly the spark. Okay? Because um, there's going to be low stuff anyway. We'll put Jack on the spark. Connor and Terrell can fly the uh, Phantoms, the company Phantoms. Three batteries each. All right, guys? Um, um, well, you already have, you guys are all have experience on the company's P3s. Here, here's the deal about flying other people's equipment, Carrie. Something happens, you gotta be able to reach in your pocket and hand it to them, right? Like no one flies my aircraft, you know, follow me? Unless I know for a fact they can afford to pay for it. Um, and you guys are all, and trust me, you get very upset when somebody flies your Mavic Air and crashes it. You may not be upset in front of them, but while you're driving home, you know, is exactly right. That damn skipper, you know, he better give me idea. My aircraft better be by step. He he better have a relationship with Amazon when I get there. Um, yeah. So, um, all right, guys. Um, that's it. That's ADM and CRM. <clears throat> Any questions? Monday, Wednesday, next week, guys. Okay, we're almost done. We're almost done. Um, remember, I asked you guys if we can go three more. Um, when we have, listen, I think I'm, next week I may I could probably finish this next week, Monday, Wednesday. Might have one more, one more might, but I might be able to get this done by uh, next week. Okay, Monday, Wednesday. Um, any questions? I'm waiting for him to buy his aircraft. <laughs> or, you know? Or maybe, wait a minute, or maybe Carrie will trust him and let him fly it. <laughs> the, um, Wally, you know what we'll do? I, I promise you. Um, if you do well, oh, you won't be here Sunday. Oh, All right. Uh, boy, I'm off the hook. I was going to say, if you do well on Saturday, uh, I mean, on Sunday, I'll let you fly to Creek. Um, you think you'll be able to come to the next weekend? Okay. Um, I know it's a church day. Um, but try, try to see if you can make it, okay? Um, guys, have a wonderful evening. I will see you, Dom, what time we mean? 1045?